Hello everyone, welcome to Windus Rugby Chat. It's episode eight this week. Um, got a guest on the show this week. We've got my right hand man, Drew Derbyshire, rugby league journalist, rugby league supremo, rugby league gospel. <laughs> there he is. Um, love rugby league senior reporter. Um, still got a few other interviews in the pipeline that hopefully come out in the next few weeks, but I thought we'd bring Drew in this week for a bit of a neutral uh, view. We won't give away who he supports, but you'll be able to figure that out when he speaks. Start speaking in a minute. Um, we're going to break down some of the other squads in the championship and see how Witness compare. Um, but first, Drew, can we have let's have a little bit of a chat about Witness if we can, and um, and what your uh, I suppose what your opinion is on on Witness and what's happened over the last twelve months. Obviously, relegation from Super League and then and then the prospects for next season. Well, first of all, James, I, I don't think Dennis should have gone. I'll throw it out there. I, don't, I think it was too soon for him to go. I, I know a lot of fans were calling for his head uh, at that time in the season when he did go, but I, I think it was it was far too early. Uh, you know, even after even after what seven or eight years in charge. Well, what, what could he do with the with the money and the resources no. that he had? Um, I, I don't I don't think uh, he couldn't have done a lot, a lot more to be honest with with the resource he had. Uh, then Francis Cummins came in, and you might say that proved. And your point about bets because obviously that, they changed that, the coach. That certainly did prove my point because it, it, it just showed that it wasn't the coach. And I, we, we don't know an awful lot about Francis Cummins as a, as a coach. He's, he's, he's not been in the game for, for a long time as a head coach, so we didn't, we didn't really know what to expect from him. But uh, it just, I think it proved that, that Dennis Betts was the man for the job. Because at least he had the plays on his side, in it, and when Francis came in, it, it didn't seem as though the the, the plays were were playing for him. Um, and then all the stuff with, that's happened with the backroom staff, the likes of James Rule um, and the the other board members coming out and saying that they'd like to, they'd, they'd be open to selling the club in the in the coming months. Uh, it's just a, a bit of a catastrophe at the minute for for the Vikings, and I actually feel feel sorry for the fans because. The, the fans are expected to, to get strong old memberships and season tickets and, and so on, and they don't really know what, what the future of the club is looking like. What What's your impression, you know, for obviously we're all quite embroiled in it as, as fans of Witness and whatever, what's your impression from an outsider, a neutral point of view, in terms of what Witness add to the game or, or what they don't add to the game? Well, <laughs> oh, you might get lynched on Twitter, yeah, that's what you're worried about here. Yeah. Let, let's be honest, in the last couple of years, they've, they've not offered uh, a lot. I think the time timing was right for him to go from, uh, down from Super League because losing, what was it? Was it 20, 20, last, 20 yeah. league games in a row? It's, that, that, that's that's yeah. uh, unheard of in any sport, in, in any professional environment. It, it, it was time to go. I think this, this year, it, well, 2019, he might actually do witness favours. Um, because I think they'll start to win games, and then when they win games, fans will start coming back through the gates. Because obviously attendance has dropped uh, quite massively last season, didn't they? Well, yeah, down, yeah. down to just over two thousand, below below two thousand for some games. So I think once they start winning and they get that feel good factor around the club again, I think it can only be a good thing. Thing really, it doesn't do anyone any any good winning a couple of games a season. What's the perception, I suppose, you know, from a witness point of view, you're, they've almost got, you know, the, the facilities are good, you know, the ground's decent, the academy is obviously, it's uh, the apple in the eye, I suppose, in many ways, uh, of witness. And, and what's the opinion of, of a club like witness trying to do that, but then the first team sort of floundering a little bit? Is it is it about finding that balance? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, you've got to have that, that blend of it. Of youth and experience in your side, and I think with witness over the last couple of years, the experience that they have had, that it's not been out on the field, has it? It's, it the, the majority of the, the the older heads in the squad have been injured. Uh, I think it's fantastic how, how they've kept uh, Hep Kale on. I know he struggled with injuries over the last few years, but when he's out on the field, he's one of, he's one of the best players. He's definitely a super league player. Harris and Anthony, you can still get a lot from him, uh, he'll, he'll still offer a lot. And, He's, he's still a workhorse as well, even in his even in his later years. Um, but I think it was the, the the time was right for a couple of the players to move away from the club. I think the, a couple of the players had over overstayed a little bit too long at, at Witness, and I think the time timing was right for him to go. But 
looking at the squad so far, I think they still need a, a couple of older Reds in there yeah. for 2019. Well, I mean, obviously you've seen some of the young lads who've played Super League, certainly, and what I know you, you're an actual Bot fan, aren't you, I think. Um, what do you make of some of the young lads, and have they got what it takes to, to lead witness to the top of the Championship? I think they have, but, but like we said, like we said we, they, they do need the, the old Reds. Is it, is it, is it the minute? I think, is it 24-man squad or 25-man squad? They, they've got so far, it's it's a little bit thin, that for me, and uh, a couple of injuries could could see him really struggling in the Championship, but going if you highlight the the top end of when they see younger players, the likes of Ashall, but Ryan Hitt, for example, Jordan Johnston, the Chapley uh, brothers, I think they're fantastic, especially with Championship. Uh, Ashall bought we saw some real promise from him uh, last season. I know he struggled with injuries a lot in the past, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see if he can keep fully fit uh, for all of the next season because it looks like he's going to get the the number one mm. shirt, doesn't it, at, at Witness? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I've said before, durability is certainly one of the things with Ashall Bot that you, you're worried about. You'd like to think that maybe that could be addressed. Mm. You know, by the you could possibly team even, even build build the team around Ashall Bot, to be honest. Well, I suppose that, I mean, that's the idea of the academy, isn't it, really? You want well, to bring think, players... Think, and then, then you look at the, in the arms and uh, Danny Craven's a, a reliable player, suitable player, for especially for the championship. Yeah. But then Tom Gilmore is... He's, there's no doubt in his ability, but it's the consistency of Gilmore now, and I think. Is it I, is it easier I, for these younger lads? Because I, I was I was quite surprised. He's twenty three, twenty four now, isn't he? Gilmore. Even and, older than I yeah, know, and, and a lot of people. Uh, he's see, not really. I, he's I, not. I, he's I not. regard him as a real young kid. Yeah, and he's not. He's not grabbed sort of. He's had the number seven jersey for two seasons. He's not quite yeah. grabbed the, the opportunity. So that's what I mean. It's twenty nineteen is very important for him, especially as an halfback as well. He's looking to di- dictate play and guide his team around the field. Do you do you think maybe that do you think maybe that it's it's obviously better for these younger players to be coming in at a championship because the standards a bit lower. Mm. Do you think the fact that people are judging maybe Craven and Gilmore on the Super League standard are perhaps missing the point that actually Craven and Gilmore might actually be a decent partnership in a championship. Yeah, possibly, but in the championship you've still got to manage games and, and, and that's where Gilmore lacked a little bit last year. He lacked that consistency to manage games. Some games he was brilliant and, and, and some games he was a, a complete standout for witness. He's got a goal kicking game on him as well. And then other games, uh, we didn't really see much of him, so it's just about him maintaining that consistency. I, I quite like quite like Danny Craven, to be honest. I know he's taken a lot of stick from Winners fans over the years, but I oh, quite I, like I him. Like and I, and I, I like his durability as well. He can play various positions. Mm. It, he'll be he'll be a handy player for the Vikings. So, so what we're going to do, we've picked out who we think are going to be the top seven seven teams in championship next season not in order not in order, <laughs> not we've, in done order. The, what, we've done the one to 13s as they stand now there's a couple of gaps in in lee and featherston particularly because their recruitment's being a bit they're still recruiting i'd imagine featherston's may even be filled by leeds dual reg players which we'll talk about in a minute but let's so what we're going to do we're going to go 113 through all these seven teams and we're going to have a have a bit of a who would you rather have? Would you have the witness option in that position or would you rather have the other team's option? And the other six teams other than witness are Toronto, Toulouse, Halifax Lee, Featherston and Bradford. So to start off with, we're gonna we've we're pretty much unanimous on our one to thirteen for witness. I think yeah. we both picked the same same team. So just run through witness. We've got fullback Oliver Ashall, but on one wing we've got Ryan Ince, on the other wing we've got Jack Owens. We've got Chris Nininu and Anthony Geller in the centres. We've got Danny Craven and Tom Gilmore at half-back. We've got a front row of James Chappellow, Liam Wood and Adam Tangata. A back row of Chris Dean and Harrison Hansen with Hep Kale at loose forward. So that's the 13, as things stand, that we think is Witness's strongest 13. Yeah? That, and that's a pretty strong right. Well, yeah, I mean, I think... I mean, I think we, obviously we've, had a few, we've had a few episodes talking about this, but, you know, I, I think a lot of Witness fans are probably looking at a half back but he's sort of like where'd you get one from do you know what I mean and, I, I, um, I think they're too, too I, I think you've got to give them a, I, I, th- I think ultimately the fact that Craven and Gilmore are both still at the club yeah. suggests and, that the and, club want them to be the first you know because what's the point in keeping them if they're not going to be playing the, the recent acquisitions as well of Inu and Gellin that, that works wonders for yeah. I think it look a little bit bleak without them two names but uh, it's, it's a strong 13 though. yeah definitely so so 
Toronto are obviously going to be heavy favourites, so we'll compare we'll compare them first. Um, what's the best way to do it? Should we do the 1 to 13 first yeah. and then we'll go through each position? So, for Toronto strongest 13, this is what we've agreed with. You might have to help me with a pronunciation I've noticed on Adrian. But we've got Gareth we, we've got Gareth we've got Gareth O'Brien at fullback, we've got Matty Russell and Liam Kay on the wings, although Kay's got a bad injury, hasn't he? Yeah. I'm not sure if he'll be back. Uh, we've got Ricky Latelli, Latelli yeah. whatever. What you said, James. And, and Chase Stanley at centre. We've got Josh McCrone and then of course ex witness half back Joe Mellet at half back. We've got two more ex witness players in the in the front row in Jack Buchanan and Bob Bezik and then Aston Sims. Um, we've got another ex witness player in back row in Tom Alderson alongside Bodie and Thompson. And then we've got John Wilkin at blues forward. Um, we had, a, we had a bit of a dry run and this might not look pretty for witness <laughs> from, from before, but let's go through. So, full back, we're going yeah, but even, now. even though I do like Ash all, but I think at this moment in time I'd have Gareth, o, Gareth O'Brien. Yeah. Um, wingers, Russell and Kay, I'd probably, they're probably going over in Sando wins, would you say? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. So, we've got three out of three for Toronto so far. Now, centres is, is probably one up for it's debate. I'd have Gellin, I'd have Gellin over Stanley. Yeah, and then I don't know much about I don't know much about the Tell or whatever he's called. He's, he's got a lot of experience in the NRL. Um, I mean, Innie can kick goals. But Innie can kick goals. Um, and certainly, send, I mean, obviously, you'd imagine that throughout this process, we're probably going to pick the witness centres in the against everyone's. You'd imagine, aren't we? We'll, um, we'll go. Do you want to go with Innie? I'm bowing to your superior knowledge, Drew, I think, because I don't know a great deal about the other lad. Should we go? Should we split it and go Gellin and Leeds Hill and give them one each? Go and on, we'll man. Go on, man. Yeah, we'll do um, Half back, I think we're going to have to go with both Torontos, McCrone and Mellor over. Joe Craven Mellor, your old mate, was yeah. in, in the office somewhere. Jim is going to sign no, it's uh, gone. Joe it's Mellor's gone. shirt. It's gone. A, a viewer a viewer asked for it, so a viewer has got it. <laughs> um, we're not bitter, honest. Um, so yeah, so that's what five out of what we go in is that six out of seven we've gone for Toronto over Witness so far. Now front row we've got Buchanan, Bezik, and Sims against Chapelau, Hood, and Tangata. I'd have Hood over Bezik. Uh, the Sims Tangata one's an interesting one because Sims is obviously on the down with mm. he's a, you know he's on the downward spiral. Is it, of his uh, yeah, I know a lot of people still. Think of him in, in that first season at Warrington, don't they? Yeah, um, and Tangat is obviously he's coming towards the back end. Tangat is a very good championship prop. I think Buchanan, I think, was at Witness. I think Witness probably. They offered him a deal for Super League last season and he turned it down. They offered him less money. I'd be tempted to go with Sims and Tangata. Maybe. Are you cheating? Are we, is that what we're doing? So Windows are gonna get a two one win out of the front row there, so what what does that take us to now? Eight out of ten no seven out seven out of ten to run you're, you're yeah. better at last than me, James. I should have got a pen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> back row, Bodine Thompson and Tom Alderson against Christine and Harrison Hansen. Um would you go Harrison Hansen and Bodine maybe? No. Lee's back row from last season of course. I'd go Hansen and Alderson. Personally. Someone shot me a penny, which is good. So, so we're going we're going to Toronto there. We're going to Toronto there. Um we're going I I'd have I'd have, Toronto, I'd personally have Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Harrison Hansen and Tom Al- Alderson. Right, so we're we're splitting well. it as well. So we're splitting it again. So and then back row, KLO Wilkin. I'd, I'd, I'd have to say Wilkin myself. I think he had a fantastic year for Saints. So what we're going with there is a 9-4 victory for Toronto on the... We uh, thought it would be worse, didn't we? We did think it would be worse. I mean, I guess one of the key points is that we're only looking at the starting 13 here and obviously you'd imagine Toronto probably... Well, Toronto have got more depth than Witness. So I think if Witness can keep the starting 13 or starting 17 on the field, then, you know, we think they can can give it a good goal. But, you know, like you say, if there's injuries... um, you know, we don't know who they're going to recruit by the start of the season. But to be fair, I don't think 9-4 is a terrible, no, a terrible turn. Really and, and, and of course, they meet in round three in, in Newcastle for the uh, Toronto home game. Um, so, Witten has got a really tricky start. Halifax to lose Toronto. So, they're going to know after three games. Mm. You, well, you'd like to think that if they're all fit for the start of the season, they're at least all going to be playing <laughs> the first three games, aren't they? So, um, 
So 9-4, Toronto. So let's move on to Toulouse. Blimey, you, you're definitely going to have to go yeah. with this one. So we'll, we'll run through the 13. Our, our favourite favorite 13 for Toulouse. We've got Mark Corella, fullback. We've got Tony Morel and Elias Bergal on the wings. We've got Bastian Ader, Adair and Gavin Marjorie in centres. We've got Jonathan Ford and Stan Raban in half-back. Preferred over Will Bartel, much to my uh, protest. Well, we won't have any Pettiborn in either, according to you. No, we've got uh, Pettiborn's in. We've got Clement Boyer and Eddie Pettiborn um, either side of Anthony Marion in the front row. We've got Seb Planyas, the captain, and Reese Curran at the back row, and then Andrew Bentley at 13. So we're going Corella, aren't we? Let's be honest. Yeah, well, yeah. Championship um, player of the year. Yeah. Uh, fantastic gonna, player. And, you know, um, so Wingers is an interesting one. We've got Morel and Bergal against oh. Owens and Ince. I'd probably go Bergal and Owens. Would you? Um, Bergal's a really good finisher. And he's yeah, got a lot of go on, I'll give you that one. We'll do that then. And we'll go in both witness centres, I think. Yeah, definitely both witness centres. Yeah. And um, I'm going over at Adair and at Marguerite. So that's witness 3 2 at the minute. Now, half backs. Ford. I'd, I'd probably go both to lose. You go in both to lose his half backs, right? Jonathan Ford Jonathan and Stan Raban. Right, front row then. You're having Hood, aren't we? We're, we're having Hood over Mario. Yeah, Hood over Mario. Um, mm. Eddie Pessibon, go, go. Him and Tangata, do you think? Mm, I like Clement Boyer. Do you like Boyer over he's a very. T- he's a very Boyer's the sort of player that you want in your team. He runs his blood to water. <laughs> he's aggressive. We'll split it then. Should we do? Oh. We'll do. We'll do one of each for props to balance it out. Now back row. Curry. Uh, what for the Boyer? Right, Boyer. Just a good Boyer. Boyer, yeah. Boyer and Sangatta. Good Boyer. Right. Back row. Planyas and Curran. Now Curran. Curran. He's got to be the nanny. One of the best Curran back rows in championship. In yeah. Um, but you probably have Hansen over Ponyas. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then probably Kale, wouldn't you? You have Kale over Andrew Bentley. Yeah. Yeah. Right then, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a narrow seven, six witness win there. Yeah. It's yeah. Decent. So, decent. I mean, I suppose but the what, moment... What's good about Toulouse, though, is they play well as a team. Yeah, I think, which... yeah. And, and, and like I say, you know, this doesn't really take into consideration yeah. depth. You know, we're looking at the starting 13 here. Um, Toronto could have a very good 13, second 13. Yeah, though. as well. I think, I think obviously, the, I mean, we've only done two teams so far, but obviously the most alarming thing is that half-back wise, we've gone for the other two yeah. teams' half-backs both yeah. times. So that maybe shows also the wingers as well. We've struggled a little bit, so maybe is that the? I mean, I mean, I, I think we were pretty sure on that anyway that wing and half-back is maybe the two areas witness could uh, use. Some just strength. yeah, just to win on the wing. Jack, a lot of people give Jack Owen stick, didn't they? When when he was at witness and it's, when he went witness, a lot of people were giving him grief on Twitter and, and so on. I, I watched him quite a bit at Lee last year. Um, covering the championship and I thought he was fantastic for Lee. He's bulked up a little bit as well since he left Widnes and uh, that could do him some good. He's, I, he's, I, he's, I like Jack Owens and he's, still he's, ut- he's got the utility. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a bit of talk about him maybe playing at standoff as well which would be interesting because I think when he was at Widnes last time I think he lost a lot of confidence because he was struggling under the high ball mm. um, and obviously if you play him at standoff you sort of take that away from him. Um, I think at the moment we've got him in on the wing because Witness haven't really got any other option. You know, you've got Owen Buckley, who's a young lad mm. who could play on wing. So, I think I think what this exercise we've only done the two other teams so far, but I think it's definitely shown that winger and half back and maybe where Witness are lacking. We'll move on to Halifax, which is going to be a lot more interesting. So, QLT or Ashall Bot? QLT. QLT. Again, I like Ashall Bot, but QLT. For me, he didn't do anything wrong at Casper last year. I think I think he should still be playing in Super League. Um, uh, Halifax have got a good few options at wing. They've got Will Sharp um, and James Saltonstall, and they've also added Sean Robinson from Featherston. Um, we went for Sharp and Robinson in this team. Um, are you having both of them over the two witness options? Um, probably not, no. I'd, I'd go with Owens and Robinson, personally. So... One each there. Centres. Now Steve Tyre is a witness lad. 
kicks a lot of goals, good scores player, a lot of tries. So good player. Are you having him um, or Inu if you had to choose? In no, I'd, I'd go for Inu and Gellin over Inu and Butler Gellin. and Steve Tyra. Uh, Half backs then, so Morell and Johnston. We're going Morell, I think, aren't it's we? It's got to be Scott Morell, and I'm probably going Gilmore over Johnston. Some Gilmore over, over Johnston. Um, we got Dan Fl- oh, not read through the full team, have I? <laughs> You've not. Balls on there, I will put them on the screen as well. We just run through this half back team. We've got QLT, Will Sharp, Steve Tyra, Chester Butler, Sean Robinson, Scott Morell, and then Ben Johnston. We've gone through them. So the six in the pack, we've gone Dan Fleming, Ben Kay, Ben Kavanagh. Shane Grady, Kevin Leroy, and Jacob Fairbank. So, front row then, Fleming, K, Kavanagh against Chapelau, Hood, Tangata. Very good front row, isn't it, for Halifax? Yeah, it is a good front row. I mean, we struggled, didn't we, with the pack, Halifax's pack, because we, yeah, well, well, we, we left a couple of players out, we had a shout yeah. for getting in there. When, when Ben Kavanagh left Okiara, I, I remember telling you in the office, James, that I thought wouldn't with the perfect club to, to go in for Ben Kavanagh. I know I well, spent, a bit, before, spent right? a bit of time at the Vikings before, but I thought he's, he's Halifax he's land, don't think, Kavanagh. Yeah, he is. But, but the fact <coughs> that Halifax are a part time and now he's having mm. like doing work with the community, so he is a full time wage, I thought he, he would have been a perfect fit for Would you have Kavanagh over Tangata, though? I'd have him over Jay Chapoy. That wasn't what I asked. I know you're over Jay Chapel. <laughs> so we're gonna go are we gonna split this again? We're gonna go one and one. We're gonna go Fleming and Sangata. No, come on. No? Fleming and Tangata. You think Fleming's better than Kavanagh? Oh well we'll go Kavanagh then if you want, but we're gonna split them, are we? Yeah. Or we're we gonna are. have Fleming and Kavanagh. We'll have Tangata and Hood or Ben K. Now I like Ben K. He's Bank, quite busy, yeah, but I'll like Liam Hood. Right, we're going Hood. I'll like Liam Hood, he's, he's great, number nine. Um, back row, Shane Grady, another witness lad, and I, you know, again, I think witness may be missing a trick a little. I mean, it's difficult, obviously, that transition from no, part Harrison time. No, Harrison and Kevin Leroy in back row. Is that what you're going? Yeah. But, but, I mean, I think I'd love to see. Um, I'd love. To, I'd have loved to have seen Tyre and Grady play for witness again. I think because I think where witness are at, I think it'd be nice. It, Two experienced mm. players to come back and play around the young lads would have been nice, but been nice to get Danny Richardson and Mark Bell oh, well, as well. Yeah. Um, and we're going K, we're going Kale, aren't we, over Fairbank? One, two, three, yeah. four, five. So another witness win there. We've gone eight five in witness's favour for that one. Which, to be fair, this is going relatively how you'd thought, isn't it? Very, you know, very, quite a few 50-50 ones all in there, weren't yeah. it? Between winners and but, but I think you're looking at, you know, you're looking at, we expected Toronto to be strong, we expected it to be closer to lose, and we probably expect Witness as the full-time team yeah. to have better options than Halifax. But yeah, then, having different. said that, looking at Halifax's squad, we do think they've got a little bit more depth than what Witness have got. Now, Lee is a tricky one because they've not signed... <laughs> not got many players. They've not got many players, so... Um, we've left, it, we've 13, left. 13, 14. We're going to judge this on 11 because we've left two positions missing. So full-back we're missing. And then we've got ex-witness player Stefan Marsh, Ian Thornley, Jack Higginson and Johnny Powernall. We've got Martin Ridgeard at 6 and then the gap at 7. Um, we've got another ex-witness, Loney, Andy Braycheck. A, a prop with Tom Spencer and Mickey Hyman Hooker and then a back row of Andy Thornley, Luke Adamson and Toby Adamson. I was shouting to have another form of form winners player, Sam Brooks included in this, but Drew used his size and persuaded otherwise. Um so we're not gonna count he's, he's, he's more of a front row, isn't he? Sam Brooks or... Well I'd have played him at thirteen, but anyway. Um, ball play ball. So Marsh and Powell like a ball play You 13, like a ball yeah. play thirteen, yeah. Um, Marsh and Powell. Now over in St. Owens. Yeah, um Now I had a catch Stephen Marsh at Witness. Marsh over Ince or Owens. Um <coughs> If I'm honest, I don't think Marsh should be playing on wing, I think he should be a centre. No. Um But you started at centre, didn't he? And you moved yeah, out I know, but because he's bulked up in his size now, I think he should move back in the But centre. he returns the ball really well. I'm I'm making the case for him to be a winger because I think he returns the ball really well, Stefan Marsh. There will be people who say that because he can't finish acrobatically in the corner, maybe that's yeah. why he can't be a winger, but... Um, I, yeah, go on then. Go on. <coughs> we'll go for Marsh. Are we splitting him then? Because you're going, are you going, power, are you, are you going power all over Owens or are you going Owens over power all? Hmm. I go. 
it's very 50-50 this one. Uh, I'll go for a wins. You're going Owens, so we're going, going for a win. National wins. Centres, we're just going witness. I know Ian Thornley's decent, but yeah. he's, not, he's not christening in him, is he? Let's be honest. Ridyard, we're going Ridyard. We're, 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 yeah. we're, uh, going, we're going Ridyard. <laughs> right. We're doing Gellin. Uh, we'll go Ridyard over, over Craven. And, and you know, obviously it's a vacant spot number seven at least, so we'll go. Right, front row's where it gets interesting, because Andy Braycheck is a real season championship player and he, he runs his blood to water as well. We've got Mickey Iam, who's got probably more experience than the entire Rudner squad put together. And Tom Spencer, who played for the Broncos last season. I go Tangata. You're going to be opening the Tangata fan club at this rate. Tangata, <coughs> Spencer Ooh. and... Hood or Hyam. This might be the one that Hood loses. Uh... I might push Hyam here. But I think Hood can do 80 minutes. I know. And I know what to say. <laughs> but we're going Hyam. Right? Go on then, we'll go Back on. Back row. I think Witness might win all three of these, Thornley and the Adamson brothers, against Christine, Harrison, Hansen and Kale. Yep. So, obviously Lee's still got plenty to recruit, so that may well change, but out of the 11 there, we've got a 7-4 Witness win. Featherston, a couple of gaps here. We've got Dakota Wiley at fullback. Um, <coughs> we've got a gap on the wing, which we would imagine we may even be, will probably be filled by Luke Briscoe and Jewel Reds, do you think? Yeah, or Harry Newman. <coughs> Harry Newman, yeah. Uh, Thompson Tetty in the centre of PNG. Um, with John Davis, who we've sort of shoe on in at centre because they didn't have any other options. Uh, Josh Hardcastle on the wing. We've got the Boas brothers, uh, both from PNG at half. We've got Scott Wielden and Jack Bussey at prop, but we haven't got a hooker yet for Featherston. Um, we've got Brett Delaney and James Lockwood. In the back row with Brad Day at least forward worth a shout out to Ryan Bailey and Jordan Tanzi who are both on trial. You know, maybe Tanzi had slot in at full back and while they go on the wing perhaps. Um although Bailey won't be filling in a hooker. Yeah. Um so we'll do this one out of eleven again. Witness this is gonna be the first one Ash or Bot wins. Yeah. Um centres. I really like John Davis, but again he's no, not. It's gonna be in him again. It's gotta be in him again, isn't it? Um, um Hardcastle, I think you'd probably go Owens over Owens, Hardcastle. Yeah. Now, Boas Brothers. We don't well I I've I've watched of Papa New Guinea, but obviously when it's on the international scene and playing Papa yeah, it's New a lot Guinea, different. it's very, very, very As different. we've seen with and Albert. Exactly. And Stanton Albert. Um, yeah. so I'm not too I'm not too uh, it's hard to predict how they'll go in this this weather over here in, in, in do you know what I mean? In, in, Febu in February in February Fenerson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they've signed up for there, but um Shall we split them? Are we gonna sit on the fence and split them? No, I'll go I'll go Craven and Gilmore, be honest. Right. Um Right then. Front row, Wielder and Bussy against Chapel and Sangata. Jack Boss really uh, received a lot of a lot of grief, didn't he? After the bite. after his uh, biting into well, he's a decent player. Player. I probably play him at player. Player. I probably play him at thirteen. He's a very good player, but yeah, just <coughs> you play him at fifteen, which put him in at number well, ten. We've got Brad so, Day at thirteen, uh, and Brad Day is a good player. Well, uh, Brad Day is a good championship player. He was calling for Jack Boss to be played at. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, well, I was trying to get him in. Baffling. Um, going back to the front row. Tangata's got me in there. <laughs> right. And um, Chapel, how are wielding? Or Bussy? I'd, be, I'd probably go Bussy. Right, so um, we're going to split then. Right, back row, Delaney Lockwood against Dean and Hansen. You go in Delaney perhaps for his Delaney experience. Delaney Hansen. Um, and, and then Hep Kale. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of 11. So that's a 9 2 for witness. Um, so we've gone through five other teams so far and it's looking probably where we expected, you know, Toronto old favourites and then Witness and Toulouse fairly close, Halifax just a little bit behind and then Liam Pedersen. The next and final team we're going to run through is Bradford. Now, we're not discounting anybody else just before we get any group, <laughs> but these are who we've established as Rochdale's the favourites. Team, yeah. Rochdale, yeah, Ro I mean, Rochdale's wingers would probably win some of these contests. 
Sean Ain't Gone Paddy Flynn. Rochdale's hooker, he's got more, will probably win a couple of these as well anyway. I really like Jake Galbraith as well. He's another one who was at, at, at Rochdale. No, um, Lewis Galbraith. A sense, sorry, yeah. No, um, he's gone back way. Yeah, no, yeah, but he played at Rochdale, but yeah, anyway. Played last season at Bradford. We'll edit that out, we'll edit that out. No, we won't. Um, so Bradford. Yeah, Greg McNally at fullback. And we've gone Hitchcock's. Jake Webster. To be fair, when we were putting this team together, we were quite surprised, yeah. weren't we, at how strong Bradford were. So we've got Jai Hitchcock, Jake Webster, Reese Evans, and Ethan Ryan. We've got Jordan Lilly and Dane Chisholm at half back. We've got Steve Crossley, Sam Hallas, and James Green in the front row. And then we've got Elliot Minchella, Matt Garside, and another former witness player, Connor Farrell, at loose forward. Now, there was quite a few other players that we could have got into that team. Mm. You know, George Flanagan, Joe Keys. Um, that we decided not to, and that was the team we went with. Now then, I think this could be surprising, and I think Bradford might even sneak under the radar a little bit this season because yeah, they've just been yeah. promoted. They didn't, Good you know, coach and John Keir. you know, they didn't win League One. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I think York's team. I mean, I suppose it's a bit of a strange one because I look at York's squad and I don't think they'll compete for. The, I think yeah. they'll be around no, mid-table, no. but. Yeah. And it's quite strange to say that when you consider York won the league and Bradford finished second. But if you look at who Bradford have added, yeah. you know, you've got Lily on the year long, you've got Reece Evans, you've got Jake Webster, you've got Jai Hitchcock. Well, some of the players are full time as well. <coughs> Connor Farrell as well. All the players that Bradford have added are all first team top end championship players. Well, just, just look at that back line Greg McNally, plenty of championship yeah. experience. Jai Hitchcock's played in Super League Grand Final before. J- uh, Jake Webster's played in Super League Grand Final before. Reece Evans has. Reece Evans has. Ethan Riser, an upcoming, upcoming Winger Island international. Bag straps are fun. So that, that, back, mm. that line alone is, is dangerous. So, do you want to go through them now? Yeah, so we're going McNally, are we? Over Ash Orbot? I've watched Orbot. You're going Ash Orbot? Oh, he's put a cat amongst pigeons here. Eh? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. So really, you've got Ash Orbot over McNally? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> who, who am I to argue? Hitchcock's, we're going Hitchcock's. Yeah, we would go Hitchcock's over Ints. Ethan <coughs> Ryan, Jack Owens. I'm tempted to go Ryan, you know. He right, scores so a lot of tries. Right, centres, Webster and Evans. I still don't think that. No, think, I'd still go in there and Gellar. I'd, I'd um, still go in there and Gellar. That's probably the closest it's been, isn't it? I think. But there's still two very good strikes. Centers. Now, half back. You're going both Bradford's half backs? William Chisholm. Jordan Lilly is a little bit like Tom Gilmore in the respect that we, we know he's got talent. But it's, he's not it's quite. the consistency. That, I think we've got to go with Dame Chisholm. Uh, yeah. A really, really solid player, good organiser. But you're going Craven over Lilly? Is that what you're itching towards here? No, you've got to go. You're going Lilly? Go, yeah. yeah, to be fair, you've got, go you'd, you'd have to go with Jordan Lilly over. Uh, right, Crossley Hallas, James Green against Chapel Owl, Hood, and Tango. We always get stuck at the props. We're going Hood, aren't we? <laughs> We're going Hood. We'll go for Liam Wood over Sam Ellis, um, James Green over Jay Chappell and Adam Tengato over <laughs> Steve Crossley. <laughs> right, back row, Minchella Garside against Dean and Hansen. Garside's a really good championship player. Yeah, Minchella's a, a, got a good uh, work ethic as well with him, um, but I'd, I'd probably be tempted to go with Christine and Harrison Hansen, would you? Yeah, and then Farrell Kale, we're going Kale. Kale. Right, so with we looking at that, we sort of gone with Bradford strong in the backs, Witness strong in the forwards. Sort it up there. We've got five, seven, eight. We've got an eight, five to witness there. So we do we think out of those, the five, the top five, the playoff teams are going to come from them seven. Is that what oh, we're 100%. saying? Hundred uh, percent. For me, <coughs> the top five would be Toronto, Witness, not in order. Oh, you're not going to do it in order. Oh, you're not gonna <laughs> Uh, Toronto witness to lose. Halifax, Bradford. Just, <coughs> I think I just went. because I, I don't know how Featherstone are going to do without John Duffy because he's a great coach, and I don't know how Lee are going to do with because John they, Duffy yeah. because of everything that's going on at the minute. Because and we, let's be, face it, they've only got twelve or thirteen players here. That is. So. To be honest, I was going. I think my five that I did the other week was Toronto to lo- in order. Toronto to lose, Widness, Halifax, Lee. But looking at Bradford, 
the good news is, got is it's going to be well yeah, and, and obviously they're an attractive club to yeah. sign for. Um, you know, the, you know, you'd like to think that all the stuff's behind them now, and they can look forward again. The good news is, I suppose, is that it looks like it's going to be an exciting race. Very exciting. Just as long yeah. as Witness get in there. Could make a good super in team to all one combined. Yeah. All so. So yeah, so it'd be interesting to see how, how Halifax do this year. Obviously, being part time, Lee again being part time. It'd be interesting to see whether do do Witness are Toronto Witness and Toulouse gonna pull away from some of them part time teams and maybe Bradford be dragged with them. We didn't see that much last season because of course we had the six. You know, we had the top six yeah. in the championship. We're all very very close and. You know, it was very. You know, it went to the very last day. And then, it, then it, even if you, I know it's witness rubbish, and we want to be be mainly about witness. But even if you look at the bottom of the the championship table as well, Rochdale have improved the squad massively. Uh, I still think Swinton will be will be down that bottom half of the table. But um, but yeah, York, certainly York Bat- have come up as well. You know, Batley, Batley, Dewsbury, Sheffield, York are all capable yeah. of beating teams, oh, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. And, and that's that's obviously. Like, like, Barrow drew to Toronto. Yeah, Barrow's and oh, Barrow have strengthened as well. They've got a few PNG boys in. They've got Gareth Hawk. You know, Barrow are going to be tough to play at their place yeah. early in the season. And like I say, as Toronto and Lee found out last season. Um, so yeah, really interesting. But Drew, thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving Pleasure. your impartial. Uh, got a nice bedroom here. <laughs> your impartial uh, observations for this episode. Um, Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please do like and comment and give me a tweet. Give Drew a tweet. I'll tag him in when we put this on Twitter. Um, you can watch it on YouTube. You can download your subscribe as a podcast now on iTunes, Spotify, etc. as well. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.